first one up is the uh, public hearing on Article 1. Does anyone wish to speak on Article 1, which is the budget? Total proposed budget is $23,585,440, with a default budget of $23,387,188. Does anyone from the public wish to speak on Article 1? Please, ma'am. You state your name and primary address, please. <coughs> Morning, DeLuca, 13 Raymond Lane, Hampton, New Hampshire. Uh, resident, taxpayer, and employee of the Hampton School District. The school budget that was not recommended by several members of this committee includes an additional special education case manager that would be responsible for a self-contained emotional learning and life skills program. This program would be for students who cannot successfully access the general education classroom due to a variety of reasons such as trauma and emotional issues, to name a few. This program would be similar to the Decisions Program at Winnicott High School, which services a number of our students when in high school. It would provide for a smaller academic setting to meet the academic and emotional needs of these students. The alternative to this program would be an out-of-district placement, which would cost more than $100,000 per student and therefore cost the taxpayers much more than the passage of this school budget would cost them. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on Article 1? Please. Good evening. Name My name that. is Amy Hansen, and I uh, live at 98 Lock Road. As a parent, I'm here as a parent, a resident of Hampton, and an employee of SAU 90. Uh, firstly, let me say the behavior of this committee is unacceptable. And not only in the tone and manner in which you speak to each other, but also especially to those that come before you. I must encourage you to choose civility. What is civility? Civility refers to the way people treat each other with respect, even when they disagree. Even though disagreement and confrontation play a necessary role in politics, the issue is how that disagreement <coughs> is expressed. The key is to focus on the strengths and weaknesses at hand and not to engage in personal attacks against those who favor different solutions. All town committees should be required to adhere to the code of civility. We expect our children and our schools to act responsibly, manage themselves, and respect themselves and others. The adults that serve our community should be expected to as well. That being said, let's jump into a few of the topics brought up by last week. One member of this committee mentioned that the Hampton Academy renovation project only passed by 13 votes. Excuse me, ma'am. We're only talking I'm, about I'm article, getting to the budget. It's all, it. it's all part of it. It's all part of it. Right now, I'm so getting there. One. Because it was discussed when we were discussing the budget, he kept under his breath saying the Hampton Academy, they got 13 votes. So it is applicable to what we're talking about. Admittedly, I'm passionate about this project and worked hard to get it passed. I'd like to remind you the bond was passed with 60% of the votes cast. More than 60% of the voters said yes. The negative under the breath comments about this project by members of this committee are not valid under the context to current budget or Warren articles, and they were brought up during <coughs> the discussion. Though you might not have agreed with this project, many members of this community wholeheartedly and very proud of this investment that we have made. 26 million is a lot of money. The renovation and additions add 40,000 square feet to the building. Per your suggestion that we wait a year to provide sufficient care and maintenance for this community funded investment is poor management. Wait and see what? That the building isn't clean? We already know that the increased square footage will require additional staff. This is not a close your eyes and wait and see what happens investment. The additional custodian will earn thir approximately $37,000, which results in $6 per year per $300,000 household. On to mental health and safety, which is also affected by our budget. There seems to be confusion in the understanding of the 20% contribution to match the safety improvement grant. Your reaction and under the breath comments appear to imply that SEU 90 is gouging the taxpayers for safety improvements. On top of the 26 million were your exact words. You stated we don't need these improvements because we haven't had a school shooting here. For the record, 2018 was the worst year recorded in the history of school shootings, with one occurring every eight days based on a 180-day school year. You are right, it hasn't happened here, but unfortunately, we have to add the word yet. School shootings happen in communities all over the United States, in schools and districts of varying si sizes, and it can happen here, and we must be prepared. 
Regarding trauma, the district has been proactively working on implementing a trauma-informed approach. Trauma impacts the ability to learn. We must provide support to every student and continue to train every staff member in our district. Please support the proposed child and family interventionist position, which will earn about $44,000 and be a tax impact of $7 per household. We all know someone impacted by death, divorce, violence, drug abuse, and more, and we have students in our community who are affected, and it is our duty to support them in their learning. Sometimes, in the interest of saving property taxes or being rational taxpayers, we overlook the people who work in our community. I have worked for the town, and I now currently work for the school district. In full disclosure, I am a para under the per current proposed bargaining agreement that's being discussed. When working for the town, I worked 30 hours per week, and at that time, a law was passed at the national level that employees working 30 hours a week or more are provided with benefits. Instead of that, the town cut my hours to 28 hours per week so that I would not be eligible. I love this town. I want to work here, live here, and raise my family here. When you think of property taxes as the sole priority in your decision making, you are overlooking the people who work here and live here. Why do you think there was such a marketed push for bargaining agreements for public works, fire, police, and schools in recent years? All of the income I bring to my family is spent in this community. When I buy groceries, when I get gas, when I buy prescriptions to visit the doctor or order takeout. Yes, we need to do our best to keep taxes within reach for those that live here, but also to reasonably care and pay the members of our community a fair and decent wage. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. And as a reminder to all of us, that includes everybody back here, we, don't, we have to let the meeting occur, is that civility refers to the way we treat people, we treat each other with respect, even when we disagree, please choose civility. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara. Yes. That was Amy Hanson, if that's what you're asking. Well, I'm asking if she would kindly uh, put her name in and then just write on the book. Thank you. Our recording secretary has put a sheet up there for you to put your name and, and address on I so she can system. accurately record Thank the names and the minutes. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on Article 1, ma'am? Hmm? Can you give me one second, please? Sure. Too late. I'm a little passionate. Oh, you are. Point, point of order, uh, Mr. Chairman. There is a delay in, in the from going from here to upstairs yeah. about 20 seconds. That's right. I didn't know if you knew that or not. Yeah. So when you when you have somebody come down, you got to give them like 30 seconds at least here to come down. Hmm. It's part of the reason I'm uncomfortable with this two tier thing. I don't disagree with you. <laughs> it was an option. Ma'am. Good evening, Jackie Kennedy, 718th Street, Hampton. I'm here on behalf of my husband and myself to express our support for both the SAU 90 budgets and the town budgets to be presented in the upcoming town warrant. We firmly believe they were crafted with a great deal of professionalism, thought, care, and consideration by the department heads who answer directly to the town manager, selectmen, school board, and the residents of Hampton. As longtime residents, we consider Hampton to be incredibly fortunate <coughs> to have department heads and staff who possess a wealth of educational credentials and highly regarded professional backgrounds in each of their chosen fields that allows them to guide and serve our community with expertise while also paying close attention to the prudence needed to use our collective resources wisely. For who they are and how they conduct themselves, they have our appreciation and support. Additionally, we wish to acknowledge our gratitude to the many citizens of Hampton who diligently serve as elected or appointed representatives to the various boards in our community, specifically those who serve guided by the most basic yet important principles of humility, civility, courtesy, and respect. They too have our gratitude and support. That being said, we feel it necessary to add our voices to those who believe that the recent tone and conduct of members of the Budget Committee is doing a grave disservice to our Hampton community. We watched the interaction among members of the committee and toward representatives of SAU 90 at last week's meeting. The chairman and some members of the budget committee treated Superintendent Murphy and Assistant Superintendent Lunny with a level of disrespect that is simply unacceptable. That they spoke to them in a manner that reflected such animosity and disdain while claiming to do so in the name of public service 
and in the interest of Hampton residents, made it even more abhorrent. Their conduct toward them was nothing short of disgraceful. Yet sadly, it was consistent with the condescension directed toward the department heads from police, fire, public works, and other town agencies who have come before them to present their budget over the course of the past number of meetings that we've watched. We believe Hampton deserves better from our elected and appointed officials. Civility, humility, courtesy, and respect should be the fundamental guiding principles of public service. Indeed, we expect that they should serve as the foundation for the demeanor, the words, and the conduct of those who accept the charge to serve the residents of our Hampton community. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak on this, sir? Yes, please join us. Michael Pierce, 84 Lock Road. Mm -hmm. I'd like for the chairman to keep, uh, request that everybody stay on point. We're talking about the budget article. If they can't stay on the budget article, ask them to refrain from speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak on Article 1, the budget? Uh, Joe McCoy, 10 Katie Lane, Hampton resident since 2001. I'm here in full disclosure on behalf of my wife, who is a uh, union president and a paraprofessional in the school. And um, I actually just wanted to check my math here. I'm actually chief estimator for a major construction company in Massachusetts. I deal with contracts all the time. And the difference between the budget and the default is it's a lot of money, almost $200,000, but as a percentage, 0.84%, less than 1%, actually. So to me, I always look at value more so than cost. And I think as uh, you know, a budget committee, I understand your job is difficult, but I would look and uh, really look at the asset that is being built here. It's a tremendous asset in the new uh, school construction project, and I do have a point with this. When I look at the value of that and what that would be worth if it were built in Massachusetts, it would easily be 50 million. So you're getting a tremendous value. I think a big objection to the increase if I understand it, is in the added custodial staff, if I had heard that correctly. That custodial staff is essential in maintaining that new facility that's being built. So I would really implore the public out there to look at protecting the assets of the community. It's a tremendous benefit to the community. We voted for it, 60%, and I would applaud if we would get a re-vote on this and actually have it recommended. Just for Thank clarity, you. you're, you're actually concerned about the uh, Increased custodial staff? Is that, is that your primary concern? That's not my concern. That's what I thought I had heard. You're right. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on Article 1? <coughs> Anyone else wish to speak on Article 1? Please step up to the microphone if you wish to speak on Article 1. I see no one else. Uh, therefore, I will. I will, well, we're giving them time to come down. So we will move on to Article 2. Article 2 is the uh, union contract for Seacoast Educational Support Professionals Association. Uh, budget Committee recommended this 7 to 1. Anyone wish to speak on Article 2? Please. I'm shorter than you, Joe. My husband. Oh, there are. Okay, okay so I'm going to wait. Well, we'll entertain them when they get here. You can proceed with Article 2. Okay. I have not, I have not closed the hearing on Article 1. Sure. Article 1, right? It is Article 1, I okay. believe that's. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, appreciate that. Uh, my name is Mike Muldoon, uh, 4 Colby Street in Hampton. I'm a uh, parent, I'm a taxpayer as well uh, for, for this uh, district and, and for this town, which I'm proud to be a member of. And uh, definitely I want to say that. I also want to point out that I was somebody who was part of the Hampton Academy Committee to be able to do those things. But one of the things I did when I looked at that is I looked at the Academy as an investment. Okay. And when I look at investments, I broke it down to what that costs each individual person. And one of the things when I looked at that is I looked at that and said, it's about a cup of coffee. It's about maybe a pizza. 
for each individual person in the town of Hampton per month. That was a $26 million investment that we made. By my estimate, the $200,000 difference may be a candy bar for every single member, including yourselves who represent this. So I ask you, as a board, to consider <laughs> giving a candy bar to those people because that's what it really represents, but it actually represents much, much more to all the people in Hampton. Thank you. Anyone else on Article 1? By the way, was that candy bar per month or per year? I believe, um, as a member of the Budget Committee, you can do the math. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else coming down, uh, Rusty? <laughs>